But the bulk of what we're working with are loads and switches, and then we also have power sources. And a power source is always how many points? Two, Two points. It's never just one point. Because there's a lot of confusion that surrounds this whole idea of common and ground and neutral and all that. There's all sorts of confusion that surrounds that because we aren't thinking rightly about there's two points and there's always two points. There's two design points that we're creating a path between. And ground is not one of them. Ground is a safety circuit. So when you're using a meter and you're checking to ground, you're general, that's generally not the best practice other than just a quick shortcut. But, it, but when you're diagnosing, checking to ground isn't the best practice because ground is never the intended path. I'm going to say that again because you guys are like looking at me a little blank-eyed. Ground is never the intended path. All right, we're going to get into that a little bit more in a second. But when we're building up a circuit, we're always building between these two points. And so I'm going to simultaneously, this, this little section of the class here, I'm going to simultaneously show you some symbols that are going to be really helpful to you in reading um, diagrams, ladder diagrams, and schematics. And then also talk about building up a circuit and some of the, mo some of the most common um, mistakes that, that technicians make when they are building up a circuit. So first off, line and load. It's important to be able to define that because when you're building up a circuit, you want to keep, keep things organized. And an easy way to keep things organized is to know this wire that I'm looking at right here, is it line or is it load side of that switch? It's very helpful. All right, so now we're going to build a ladder diagram. And when we build a ladder diagram, we really just kind of take lines between these two points, and then that way we can make circuit connections in between these two lines. So we're just making, we're making different circuits in between these two lines. Now, in reality, do these two lines exist? Well, a breaker panel bus bar is kind of like these two lines. I mean, it actually has some similarity to that. But in reality, these, could all, these wires could all actually come together in one point under a lug. They're not necessarily in a line like this. And that's where some, I, when I see technicians attempting to build it up on the board, they, they want to replicate the actual physical appearance of the, of the schematic. And that's not the point. This represents line side power on one leg. And this represents line side power on the other leg. Now, one question I want, to, uh, I want you guys to answer is, what makes these two legs different? Because they're both 120 volts. So why would an electron want to travel in between these two points? So one's positive, one's negative. More of the wave. It's alternating current. Right, it's alternating current. And that's why I, that's why I wrote it 120 volts plus slash minus and 120 volts minus slash plus. When the one side's positive, the other side's negative. So it's constantly changing back and forth. And so the idea that in a 240 volt typical residential circuit like we see in a condenser or in a fan coil or air handler, the idea that it's going one direction is a misnomer because it's not. It's constantly, electrons are constantly moving back and forth. All we need is the motion of electrons. We don't care which direction they're moving. It doesn't matter to us. But for us to organize our thoughts, we read it like a book. We start on the left and we go to the right. That's a logical way for us to be able to create circuits, build them up. And so we pretend like this is positive and this is negative in our heads. But the truth is, it's not a direct current circuit. There really isn't a positive and a negative. The same thing would be true if it was a 24 volt circuit. It would make no difference. So I, would, I, could, do 24, I could do 24 volts and then common. But the truth is, is that and, until we dedicate one side to ground, there really is no common on a transformer. You guys follow that? There's no real common. We dedicate a common by grounding it. All right, so we're going to build a circuit. So we're going to build a simple circuit here. We're going to go in to the switch. We're going to make this a normally closed switch, which means when you draw it, it's closed. If I draw it closed, that means it's normally closed. And you will use the letters NC to describe that. Closed means that electrons can move through it. There's a path. What's NC stand for? Normally closed. You knew that, being smart. Smarty pants, and we're gonna have a little. We're gonna have a little light here. So this is a 240 volt light. You don't see a lot of those. So we got a light bulb there, and this is. So what is what is this in the circuit? Load. It's a load, right? It's doing work. It's creating light. What is this in the circuit? Switch. This is a switch. switch. And is the and what side of the switch is this? Line, Line side. And what side of the switch is this? That's the load side. 
Line side is on because this is the line. This is the load side. Now, is this also a line in a 240 volt circuit? Yeah, it is. But we're always organizing it in a single direction. Every, every ladder schematic you're going to see is, is drawn in that way. It's red from left to right. Not because this leg is any less important than this leg, or they're, they're, they're both exactly the same. 120 volts, opposite phases. To just, to just highlight quickly what Britton was saying, they're opposite phases, which just means that when you look at a sine wave, which is really just a circle on a timeline, because really what's happening when the power is generated, it's being generated in a, in a circular motion. But when you put that on a timeline to show the passage of time going this way, it looks like a wave like this. And so this is one leg, so we'll, we'll call this L1 here, but then L2 is going to be the opposite. And a lot of us will say, so if you, so, you know, we'd see 240 volts between about here and here. Between these two points. And a lot of us would say, well, it's always opposite, but that isn't true because you can see right here at this point, ground or neutral and both legs of power are all identical when it hits this point. So even 240 volt power is constantly going on, completely on and off as well. This is the trickiest part. So we've got line, switch, load, load side of the switch. So we'll call it load side. And then you have the actual load, which is the light bulb. Okay. Now what do we call this here? This, this after. In a 240 volt circuit, we call it L2. That's all we call it. But if this were a 24 volt circuit, so let's, let's, uh, Let's change this here. We would call it, we would say 24 volts. And we would call this common. You know what we would call it if it was a 120 volt circuit? Neutral. We'd call it neutral. So if this is 120 volts, we'd call it neutral. Now what makes neutral different than common? Anybody know? On a 24 volt circuit, what's the difference between a 24 volt circuit common and a 120 volt circuit neutral? <laughs> yeah, but common usually does too. Common is a more generic term. So common, you, you'll see common used in all sorts of different applications. Perfect example is this run capacitor here. Does anyone know the three terminals on this, on this run capacitor? Yeah. What are they? It's common, herms, and fan. Yep, common, herm, and fan. Yeah. And common is the separate between. Right, there's two capacitors in this, in this capacitor, a fan cap and a, and a compressor capacitor, a larger and a smaller, and common is the common point between the two. Yeah. So when we say common, in electricity, all we're saying is it's a common point. That's all it means. It doesn't mean ground. It doesn't mean the same as neutral. It just means a common point. And so you can get confused really easily. For example, in a compressor circuit, the common side of a, cap <coughs> of a capacitor hooks to the opposite leg of incoming power from the common terminal on the compressor itself. You see technicians make this mistake all the time where they hook C because they see C here and they see C on the compressor, so they hook the two together, but that's not, that's not correct. It's the, it's the opposite of that. Because C on the compressor is the point where the two windings come together, and C on the capacitor is the point where the two capacitors come together. But as far as electrically speaking, they're, they're not similar. They're on opposite sides of the circuit. So you have to be really careful with the term common. Common means a lot of different things. When you hear it, when you say it, just make sure you know what you're saying because it doesn't mean ground and it doesn't mean neutral. All right? When we say neutral, we are talking about a specific thing. We're talking about a circuit that operates on the other side of the load from line on an 120 volt circuit. 